Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar. My name is Kent Tim. I'm the managing director of the Bay Road location for uh, Renew Physical Therapy. Our topic today, which was suggested by several folks from previous webinar experiences, is to try to answer the question, can I avoid shoulder surgery? So we're gonna to try to provide the latest information out there from a variety of different sources and see what we can do. So hopefully this will increase your understanding or at least pique some interest, but most importantly, be helpful for you if indeed you are have a sh having a shoulder problem or are anticipating a shoulder problem so we can help you get to the right level of care that you need. So let's jump into things here. There will be a question and answer session at the end, and there are mechanisms within uh, your, if you're watching this live, to, and, to ask those questions, and they will be forwarded at the end of the uh, presentation by Kate, who is helping us from the Renew Corporate Headquarters. So let's get into some things here. Can I avoid shoulder surgery? Well, there are three possible answers, like the three parts of a stoplight. No, and we'll des describe situations where so shoulder surgery is unfortunately going to be inevitable. Maybe if you've got a shoulder problem, there are some things that can be done to help you avoid the problem or avoid surgery. And yes, there are de definitive situations out there where you can do some things to help yourself and avoid the need for shoulder surgery. Now, the information we're presenting here is based upon the current research data across the variety of uh, professions that make up medical sciences. This is nothing that I dreamed up or anything such as that. I've had 38 years of experience in the field, but this is based upon the current literature from legitimate sources of authority, not just from the United States, but worldwide as well. Unfortunately, because of the nature of the human condition, no one, myself included, can guarantee absolute success because nothing is 100% certain in healthcare, in human function, and things of that regard. We can help increase the percentages of success but unfortunately, no one can give you a guarantee that if you do these things, you're going to be 100% uh, in a situation of 100% chance of avoiding surgery. So let's do our best because there are a lot of things here that we need to talk about or can talk about that, again, the intent is to help you manage or prevent problems that might result in shoulder surgery. Okay. Can I avoid shoulder surgery? The answer is no. If unfortunately you're experiencing a situation where you've got loss of the structural integrity of the bones, the ligaments, the muscles, or the tendons, meaning you have a fracture that's more than just a routine simple fracture. Even though in a simple fracture, you might get some degree of separation of the parts of the bone itself, that will typically heal. If you've got a situation where you've got a compound fracture or multiple fracture fragments or heaven forbid something where the ends of the bone overlap, that's probably going to be a surgical correction because that will not heal on its own. Or if it does heal, it will result in a shortening of the arm or loss of motion at the shoulder and just a great big functional mess, so to speak, for the shoulder. If you have a situation where a ligament a muscle, a tendon, the soft tissues, not just the bony tissues, but if you have one of the soft tissues that's been torn completely, there's probably going to need surgical repair to fix it. Because if you don't have juxtaposition, if you don't have the soft tissues right next to one another, and if they're separated, there's no way the body can fill the gap in. So a separation of a soft tissue needs a surgical repair to put the tissues back into place. So examples of this would be, as I mentioned, complex fractures, things known as glenoid labrum tears, where the supporting structure in the actual shoulder joint, the ball and socket, is torn. Complete tears of the rotator cuff. 
If you have a partial tear of the rotator cuff, as we'll talk about, that may heal and you may not need to go through surgery. But if you have a complete tear, chances are you're going to need to have that surgically repaired to regain further function. Now, an exception to this, in terms of there is one situation, that's the frozen shoulder. In a frozen shoulder, that's got nothing to do with temperature. Frozen shoulder, the technical name for that is adhesive capsulitis. That's kind of the reverse. You don't have a loss of structural integrity. You don't have a physical separation of the tissues. But in a frozen shoulder and adhesive capsulitis, through lack of movement and use of the shoulder, it simply binds down. The shoulder capsule binds down to the point where it simply cannot move and surgery is necessary to free it up to restore normal movement. So can I avoid shoulder surgery? The answer, unfortunately, is no. If you've got a loss of structural integrity and the tissues are separated so that healing cannot take place. Now, here's some examples of this. You can see the x-ray here where you've got that overlap of the bones. In this case, it's the bones of the humerus. The humerus is fractured you can see the bones overlapping. This will heal itself, but it won't heal itself normally. The bones will actually knit back or ossify, and so you'll get basically what amounts to a normal sort of bone itself, but it won't be in a normal alignment. And because of that, you're gonna have a shortened upper arm, and you're gonna lose motion and function at the shoulder. And the only way to correct this is through surgery. Now, it's a little bit more difficult to see, but in the right-hand picture, this is an MRI scan of a torn rotator cuff. And where the arrows are pointing, these are two different views. And the one that you can see more clearly is in the far right-hand view. The arrow is pointing to a black space. That black space is a tear in the rotator cuff. That's a complete tear of the rotator cuff. And so something like this is going to need surgical correction in order to restore normal function. If not, you might be able to get by, but in terms of trying to do normal activities of daily living or recreational activities, or just reaching and carrying things above shoulder level, or something as simple as trying to get a glass of milk out of the refrigerator, it's gonna need some degree of surgical correction to restore normal function. So that's the unfortunate situation of where surgery is necessary. Now, in most situations, if you're having shoulder pain, but not to the point where you've got a definitive loss of function, you probably fall into the maybe category. Can I avoid shoulder surgery? Maybe. If there's structural damage or injury, but no loss of tissue integrity. If the bone is still close to one another in good anatomical position, if the tissues, the ligaments, the tendons are maybe partially torn or stretched through a strain or sprain injury, healing will take place because there's still integrity, there's still a capillary supply, there's still a nerve system supply, so the body will heal itself over time. However, as it heals, you're going to experience a decrease or loss of functional ability. Basically, this means that you can't do what you typically want to do out there in the real world. It's difficult to reach. It's difficult to carry. It's difficult to wash your back. It's difficult to put on clothing. And it's very difficult to do a lot of routine sorts of recreational activities, playing pickleball or tennis or even dribbling a basketball can be very difficult and painful. Basically, what happens is you have some degree of structural integrity, but you lose function. And the healing, you can heal, but healing requires proper management. You can't just let it alone to let it heal itself. The tissues will remodel. As I mentioned in the situation of that example of the overlap bone, the tissues may remodel, but they may bind down, resulting in a frozen shoulder. Or they may remodel and be actually back normal in terms of its structural integrity, but they may be shortened, 
meaning you're going to lose motion, or they may be lengthened, meaning you're going to lose strength. Bottom line, you might have healed tissues, but you're not going to have more normal function without some degree of appropriate management. Most shoulder problems fall into this maybe category. category. And the things that a lot of people have experienced, or at least a lot of people have heard of, bursitis, shoulder bursitis, muscle and joint pain from overuse, or goodness gracious, that thing where I did a lot of stuff. Here it is, it's, we're into fall. Maybe I'm cleaning my gutters and I'm doing a lot of work on the weekend. And it's a situation where I've done a little bit more than I'm used to. So you get that feeling of muscles you haven't used in a while. Muscle strains result from this. Or if you're involved in a lot of assembly line work in the automobile industry, or if you're doing a lot of keyboard work, computerized or whatever else, you get a lot of repetitive motion injuries, wear and tear over time. These would also fall into the maybe category. Simple fractures from a fall would fit into this and a lot of things related to tendonitis. Tendonitis of the rotator cuff, tendonitis of the, of the deltoid, tendonitis of the biceps, basically irritation of the tendon, which prevents normal function. Over time, this can result in actual structural damage and loss of integrity. But in the near term, this can be healed. This can, if managed appropriately, basically restore normal function so normal sur pardon me, so surgery is not necessary. So what do you need to do if you're in this maybe category? And this is a situation where a lot of folks feel that, oh my goodness, there's nothing I can do, or with no disrespect intended, if I just take two aspirin or two Tylenol or two Advil or two whatever your favorite pain med is, yeah, it'll take the edge off the pain. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not a complete way of managing things. You not only have to take care of the pain, you have to take care of the underlying cause of the pain. And pain medications take care of the pain or at least try to take some edge off the pain. They don't do anything for the affected underlying tissues. It takes more than pain medications. And physicians will tell you this, and it's a situation that it takes more than just a prescription, at least a prescription for medication, to help you get back to normal function and avoid the possible need for surgery in the future. A patient or someone who's affected by shoulder pain needs to take some action especially at the shoulder, because, because, because of the unique complexity and the fact that, quite frankly, a lot of the muscles at the shoulder, a lot of the tendons at the shoulder are smaller and are more prone to injury than, say, the hip or the lower back or the knee or even the ankle. The sooner you take action after you first develop symptoms, the better and the more smoothly the recovery is going to go. So, if you're starting to get pain at the shoulder, it's not just grinning and bearing it or just taking to Advil or whatever your favorite pain med is. You need to do something more in that for your own best interest. And that activity involves some degree of exercise. A lot of folks make the mistake, I'm getting shoulder pain, I'm just gonna rest. If they do that over time, that's how adhesive capsulitis, the frozen shoulder syndrome develops. And that's a problem because in a lot of cases, that's either a surgical correction or manipulation under anesthesia where the doctor puts you to sleep and honestly cranks on your shoulder to get more motion back. And guess what? After that, you have to go through rehab and it probably hurts a little bit more in some cases a lot more than if you would have done these things in the first place and prevent the problem in the first place. Sorry for, for being, well, I don't apologize. I'm being blunt, but that's the honest sort of situation that's involved with this. So instead of complete rest, which might end up in a frozen shoulder, it's really controlled activity. It's doing what is appropriate within the limitations of pain and then if pain starts to develop, then it becomes a matter of resting, recovering, using pain meds to avoid overuse and allow the recovery to continue. So how, do, how are these things done? 
in two general types of exercise procedures. And there are many variations on these themes. The next several slides are gonna show kind of the, well, I shouldn't say kind of, they're gonna show the gold standard, the current information in terms of procedures to do based upon the current medical literature. It, it boils down to two components. One is motion to keep the shoulder joint mobile, to promote normal mechanics and to prevent that adhesive capsulitis, that, shoulder, that frozen shoulder syndrome. And the other one is a strengthening procedure through isometric exercises or pressing exercises. These things are relatively easy in, in relative terms. It doesn't mean that's something where you can just kind of sit there and do it. You do have to take some action. There is some work involved. But none of these things should be uncomfortable. If some folks make the mistake, is they try to do too much too soon. More is not necessarily better. This is not a no pain, no gain situation. Trying to push through the pain or stretch through the pain or quote, suck it up and going for it, unquote, is going to cause more damage and unnecessary discomfort. So when we have patients in the clinic, we instruct them and re-instruct them as necessary to keep things comfortable. Motion that's comfortable is good. Muscle activities and exercises that produce muscle contraction through pressing are good, but they've got to be comfortable and tolerable. Okay, so let's take a look at these things. And these are just kind of general sorts of illustrations. As we'll say at the end, if people have questions or want copies or more examples of the specific exercises we're showing here, we'll mention how to get that, how we can get that information to you. We're not gonna make it available for everyone because we don't wanna waste paper. But if you're interested in this, in the short term or the long term, you'll see how to get a hold of this and we'll get this information to you. That's, that's something that we can pretty much close to guaranteeing even though they're not 100% guarantees of anything, but we'll do our best to get the necessary information to you. Now, basically, you see the motion exercise. For those of you who may have had a shoulder problem or know someone who's gone through shoulder surgery, this may look pretty familiar. This is known as the Codman pendulum exercise, named by Dr. Codman way back when, who figured out that, hey, this is a way to gently work the shoulder muscles to gently work the shoulder joint to produce comfortable movement. The person is kind of bending over, supporting themselves on a chair, and like the pendulum on a clock, and maybe there's some people who are watching who are young enough that, what are you talking about, a pendulum on a clock? I've just got this analog, I mean, I've got this digital thing or whatever else. So, if you, if nothing else, go to your local museum and find a grandfather clock, and you'll see that these things will have a pendulum that swings back and forth. And you treat your shoulder like the pendulum. So you can kind of swing it back and forth or side to side or make circles, and this basically produces comfortable movement ability at the shoulder joint. The key is to keep it comfortable. If you're trying to stretch it and it becomes troublesome or it starts to hurt, that's too much. So just gentle motion at the shoulder will help prevent the possibility of adhesive capsulitis, will keep the normal mechanics, will promote blood flow and muscle activity. Bottom line, it helps the shoulder heal itself. So that's the motion component. Now, in terms of the strengthening component, there are three primary motions that the shoulder does in terms of actual movement. Forward and upward, backward, and outward. If you want to get technical, those are known as the motions of flexion, extension, and abduction. Now, there are many ways to do these things. And we'll again mention ways that we can make these available to you or we can make arrangements for you to, to come in on a, uh, you know, a screening uh, visit and we can show these to you. That's not, not a problem at all. So basically what you're seeing here is that the person is, it looks like they're punching a towel. What they're actually doing is pushing their fist into the towel against the wall. 
The idea is they're pushing only comfortably. This is working the muscles at the shoulder. What you want to do is only keep this comfortable. You're pushing only as hard as you wish to push. If you feel pain, that's too hard. Even putting your hand in that position is gonna create some degree of muscle activity, which will help prevent shoulder surgery. So you push only as hard as you feel comfortable pushing. You hold the push as long as you feel comfortable holding it, and you repeat it as many times throughout the day as is comfortable or practical. The research is clear. Even one repetition once a day is going to be effective. The more repetitions, the better, but even as little as one repetition once a day is going to help prevent the possibility of shoulder surgery. So that's the motion of flexion or pushing forward. This next slide shows the other two motions. One is pushing backward. If the wall wasn't there, the person's elbow would be going back behind their head. Same sort of principles apply. You hold, you push only as hard as you feel comfortable pushing. You push only as long as you feel comfortable holding it, and you repeat it as many times throughout the day as is comfortable or practical. And then the final one shows a person with their arm against the wall, and they would be trying to push outward. If the wall wasn't there, their arm would come up away from their body, almost like someone's doing the chicken dance. And if you don't know what that is, you haven't missed anything, but, or else I'm dating myself, who knows? But anyway, the principle still applies. You push only as hard as you feel comfortable pushing. You hold it only as long as you feel comfortable holding it and then you repeat it as many times throughout the day as is comfortable or practical. So let's review some of those guidelines here, okay? Now before I do that, I'm gonna uh, change gears just in mid stride here, just for if nothing else an example. Not so much with the motion, but with the isometric exercises. One thing that can be done is that most of us around this part of Michigan have to drive at some point in time. When you're stopped at a stoplight or at a stop sign, not when your car's in motion, you could do the forward push isometric for flexion by just simply pressing your hand forward into the steering wheel. So if you can imagine the steering wheel here, I'm stopped at a stoplight, I'm pushing a little bit forward, that's the flexion exercise. Stoplight uh, goes green, I get back and resume driving. The, the backward for extension could be pressing back into the car seat. Again, when I'm stopped at a stoplight or a stop sign, not when the vehicle's in motion. And the outward pushing one could be, if it's my left shoulder, pushing outward into the armrest. In, uh, pardon me, the, the, the car door, the armrest on the car door. Or if you have an armrest or a console, if it's your right shoulder, pushing into the console. Again, only when it's safe, this car's not in motion, you're stopped at a stoplight. The rules to apply, you're pushing. Only as hard as you feel comfortable pushing. You're holding each push only as long as it's comfortable to hold it. You want to repeat it frequently, but again, only one rep a day is going to be helpful. And if you don't have enough time to do one rep a day, you're busier than a lot of folks, myself included, no disrespect intended. The key is if it's getting painful, you're pushing too hard or doing too much. And if you're pushing too hard or doing too much, you're creating more inflammation, you're creating more problems, you're prolonging your recovery, and unfortunately, you're increasing the chance that you may end up needing shoulder surgery. Okay. Okay, so can I avoid shoulder surgery? We've talked about situations where unfortunately, no, you can't. And maybe you can through preventative exercises and motions and things. And can you do it or can you prevent it? Yes, you can. Okay, and there are studies out there that have been shown in a variety of different populations, variety of different countries that yes, shoulder surgery can be avoided. 
The key is preventative techniques. We've talked about two of them, the motion exercises, the isometric exercises that you would do in the maybe category will help. The other factor that is more important for folks who are more active, meaning if you're in an assembly line job, if you're in a job where you have to lift and carry a lot, or if you're a competitive athlete, you're going to want to also consider resistance types exercises. Because while motion and isometrics will be very good and will help prevent things for folks who don't have to do a lot on a daily basis with the shoulder, the more strenuous you have to be, the more muscle strength you need, and the more benefit you'll achieve through resistance exercises. Now, the following slides will show six different exercises, and they're best done in this sequence. And the research from this actually comes primarily from Major League Baseball. And it's trickled down into industrial settings, it's trickled down to the general population, it's trickled down into other sports. So there's a lot of work behind this. So this involves some things and there's so there are various ways to do it, but maybe the most practical way is to use some form of a stretch band. There are other alternatives we'll talk about in a little bit. One of the activities involves extension, which is the idea of pulling a stretch band from say shoulder level down to your side. That's the motion called extension at the shoulder. The next slide over shows the motion known as adduction, where you're basically kind of squared off. You're starting at about shoulder level and pulling the stretch band down to the side. So instead of pulling backward, you're pulling down sideways. Now, if you notice on the left-hand slide, the person has their stretch band in a door. From a practical perspective, most people have doors in their homes, and most doors have three hinges. The stretch band exercise sequence can be done using the hinge positions in a door. So you don't need necessary special equipment or make an investment in a commercial-grade exercise device. For these two exercises, you can put the TheraBand in the upper hinge and do the extension or do the adduction as it's listed there. And we've got some more guidelines in following slides. Moving the stretch band down to the middle hinge, you can accomplish the motions that are known as internal rotation and external rotation. Internal rotation is pulling the thing in towards your body. External rotation is starting with it against your chest and rotating it or pulling it outward. These work the two rotatory functions of the rotator cuff. Most people find the external rotation function a little bit more challenging, and that's typically the case just by the way the shoulders put together anatomically. So these things, these particular procedures are very important for folks who have to do a lot of rotary motions in terms of maybe assembly line work. So this would help prevent or help, yes, help prevent the possibility of problems that would eventually end up in surgery. So the final two exercises, and in this case, it would be using the stretch band with the lowest hinge in a three hinge door. Flexion would be starting from about with your arm down at your side, and pulling it up in the air to shoulder level above. And then the motion of abduction, which I call kind of a snow angel type of thing, where you're starting with your arm down at your side and moving it out to the side, up away from you, like lying in the snow. Sorry for using a four letter word while it's now just still fall. But the idea is it's working an outward motion. These six motions at the shoulder will basically accomplish most all functional activities that most people would need. And again, the research behind this has shown that these sort, this sort of regimen will help avoid the need for shoulder surgery. Now, you say, well, I don't like stretch bands. Is there something else we can do? Yes, you can do the same exercises using small weights or dumbbells. Or if you don't have hand weights or dumbbells, you can get a can of corn or something that has some degree of resistance to it 
more than just the weight of your arm. And if you don't want to do that, you can basically just use your arm to go through these different motions. If you're going to do that instead of the stretch bands, or even if you do prefer it with the stretch bands, you can follow what's known as the 10 by 10 by 10 protocol. When you're doing these things, you hold it for 10 seconds, you then rest it for 10 seconds. Now people naturally shorten the rest period because they want to get the exercise over and done with. The rest period is just as important as the pull period because that rest period allows the tissues to recover, which helps decrease the pain, which helps promote vascular flow, which simply speeds up the healing process. And then doing this for 10 repetitions. So a baseline guideline using stretch bands or free weights or cans of corn or just your arm would be a 10 second hold, a 10 second rest, 10 repetitions. Those sorts of things will help avoid the need for shoulder surgery. Now, in terms of the exercise, the, you know, the diagrams and stuff, it's like, oh my goodness gracious, I'm gonna to have to record this webinar or go back over it and spend a lot of time trying to learn these things. Well, you could do that. There's nothing wrong with doing that if you'd like, or there are other ways that we can accomplish that goal for you. If you would send me an email, and this is my email address, ktim, my first initial, my last name, at renewpt.com, and just simply request a copy of the exercises. I'd be happy to email you a copy of the things. You could basically just a cop, request a copy of the motion and isometrics or the resistance or all of them, if you'd like. So if you send me an email requesting a copy, I'll be happy to send you copies of these things back via return email. Or the other sort of situation would be you can call our clinic number at 989-401-5282. That's the main appointment number here at our Bay Road location and ask for a screening appointment. You would basically ask for a free screening appointment. And the people who you would, would answer the phone would set that up, find a time that's convenient for your schedule and for our clinic availability, because again, COVID-19 is still going on and we have to make sure that we're not getting, that we're not violating CDC guidelines for social distancing and things such as that. So there's a little bit more structure involved. But if you would call and ask for a screening appointment, myself or someone else here would be happy to show you the exercises, take you through it so you have that information. So there are ways to get this information and we're happy to try to, pr to provide it to you. All you need to do is ask and we'll do our best to get the information and get you comfortable with this. Because again, the bottom line for all these things is what you can do to help minimize the chance of shoulder surgery if you already have symptoms and prevent the need for shoulder surgery if you're currently asymptomatic, but are in a position where maybe you might be at risk for shoulder problems in the future. So in summary, let me get this other thing out of the way here. In summary, shoulder surgery can be avoided through controlled activities and preventative activities. And pardon me, let me move this over a little bit. And literally, all it takes is some relatively simple exercises and a few minutes a day. This is not just me saying this, this is me as the presenter. This is based upon a lot of research over many, many, many years, variety of different settings. And this is not just by physical therapists or athletic trainers or exercise physiologists or fitness instructors. This is done by orthopedists and biomechanists. So it's hard science behind it. No speculation, this stuff will work most of the time. Again, unfortunately, no one can give you 100% ironclad clad guarantee of anything in healthcare. But realize you can help yourself. There are resources out there and we as Renew are happy to try to help you and provide those resources. All it takes is some work and a few minutes a day on your part. So again, uh, we have many locations at Renew. Let me again adjust this just a bit so you see all of our locations here because the way this box is, it tends to tends to chop off Caro and maybe a little bit all gray. 
I'm calling, or I'm not calling, I'm speaking from our Bay Road location, where again, I'm the managing director, but most all of our locations, if not all of our locations, could provide similar services. So throughout the Great Lakes Bay region, there are resources available to help you with your problems. So at this point in time, uh, we can try to answer any questions that you may have and hopefully continue this and make this a worthwhile experience. Are there any questions that people wish to, uh, wish to ask and that I can try to answer? If so please uh, follow the instructions on your online resources. And if that doesn't work, feel free to send your question to me via email. Calling is not really practical because of circumstances with patients calling for appointments and things, but if we can't get your question answered here, I'd be happy to try to answer it via email. Great, Kent, thanks so much. Um, we did have one question from one of our viewers. Um, she said she has a tear and a bone spur, and she said the bone spur prevents her from raising her arm above her shoulder. So she's wondering if she needs to look into surgery since the spur is not going away. Okay, great real world question, and it's very practical because this happens a lot. To the point that at least at our clinic here, we're seeing two or three new cases of similar situations a week. Bone spurs are not necessarily permanent situations. Bone spurs can resorb, meaning the body can resorb the bone, absorb the bone back, and the bone spur can go away. What it will take is an examination by either your orthopedic surgeon or by a physical therapist who has experience with shoulders and other sorts of orthopedics. It will help determine whether or not the spur is of such a magnitude, even with or without a rotator cuff partial tear, whether it be in a position to resorb. Meaning it's not necessarily gonna need surgery, but you're gonna need to have some degree of further investigation to determine your best options. Depending upon the circumstances in terms of your own physiology, medications may help, some degree of changes in nutrition may help, so there are other factors involved with that. Bottom line, some of the isometric things, some of the controlled motion things may help promote healing until you can get that answer of the actual nature and extent of the spur answered. Great, thanks, Kent. That's all the questions we have. Um, I do just wanna mention that we'll be sending out a follow-up email to everyone who registered with some information and you'll be able to rewatch the webinar if needed. But otherwise, thank you, Kent, for presenting and thanks everybody for joining us. My pleasure and thank you all for attending. Hopefully this has been helpful. We appreciate your feedback. So if you do have questions, concerns, or comments, please let us know because we wanna provide good quality services and if you have suggestions on other topics for future webinars, please let us know that as well, because we're part of the Great Lakes Bay region. We want to provide quality services for everyone, formal patients, people out there who don't necessarily need to come into a clinic, but would benefit from the information. We're here to help and are pleased to do so. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kent.